Hey everybody, it's George Chami with Japanese from Zero, and we are going to keep moving forward on Japanese from Zero book four. Today is going to be probably one of the most important grammar points that you're going to learn in Japanese. And I don't say that to be clickbait. I really believe what we're getting ready to do, not only does it require you to already have learned a lot of Japanese, but it's also required for you to do the most advanced sentences ever. In particular, we're going to be dealing with verbs that describe. This is the fourth video for lesson four, and we're going to have one after this even that uh, tests you on what we learned a little bit, or at least answers some of what we can do in the quiz that I introduce at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned to get the quiz. All right, let's move on. Let's just, it's actually a very short video, but it's going to require you to use all of the Japanese that you've learned up until now. It is a simple yet advanced piece of grammar. All right. Oh, it's got to get some, some business in. Sorry about that. If you don't have book four, you can buy it here. That link right there, learnfz.com slash JapaneseFZ4 will take you to uh, Amazon, but you can also get it on Barnes and Noble. And you can also go, once there is not a pandemic, you can go into Kinokunia, Kinokunia in uh, America and you can buy it there. Also, I want to show every now and then I like to highlight what uh, are some uh, really great reviews for the book. This is one of my favorites. Um, just right here, it just says like, as advertised. I feel like that's a very high praise right there. Accurate description. Yeah, it's a Japanese book that teaches Japanese. All right, thank you for your reviews. Moving on. All right, <clears throat> so what do we have here on the screen? We have three apples. We have a ringo, a ringo, and a ringo. But how could we describe these apples to give it more context. They're all white, so we can't say that they're white apples, but there's something different about these apples. One is partially eaten, maybe it's in the middle of getting eaten, and the other one is completely eaten. So let's look at it, let's see what we can do. Now, in Japanese, every Japanese verb can be used just like an adjective. I'm gonna say that again. Every Japanese verb in any informal form can be used like an adjective. You just throw it in front of the noun. For example, listen to this. Now, if you don't know what that's doing, that is going to be weird. You're saying eat apple. But we have to look at what the verb is doing on its own. Taberu means I will eat. So when you say taberu ringo instead of ringo o taberu, if we say ringo o taberu, it means I'm going to eat an apple. But here we are directly modifying apple. This is the apple that I am going to eat or the apple that I will eat. Taberu ringo. Now from this point on, which I will show you in a bit, we can now say things about that. We can start talking about it. But right now let's just get used to saying the apple that I can eat. All right, or the apple that I'm sorry, the apple that I will eat. So taberu ringo. All right, moving on. So as we know, Taberu can be future, as in I will eat it, or it can be present tense, like a habitual thing that you do. I eat apples, okay? So in order to force it into one of its forms, we could put itsumo in front. So you could say this. Itsumo taberu ringo. That means the apple or the apples that I always eat. Itsumo taberu ringo. All right, now. If we want to force it into the future tense, it will be, we'll put imakara, which means from now. Imakara taberu ringo. The apple that I'm going to eat. Now it means future. From this point forward, from right now, the apple that I'm going to eat. Now, all by, by themselves, these don't make sense, but they will make sense once you put them into a sentence. Right now, we're just kind of drilling down on what apple we're talking about. We're not just talking about an apple. We're talking about the apple that I'm going to eat or the apple that I always eat, or the apple that I'm going to eat from this point forward, okay? Now let's look at the second apple. How could we describe this? Tabete iru ringo. The apple that I am eating. Now, you could also have the E removed. This E often gets dropped. We already know this, but because we're teaching Japanese, we're gonna give the proper version. Tabete iru ringo. Okay, so tabete iru ringo. It could be tabete iru ringo. The apple that I'm eating. That's literally the apple that I'm eating right now. Okay? Now, we can also put a subject or someone that's doing the action using ga. 
Now, in this case, now we've had a lot of discussion on Wanga, and there are rules on Wanga, and people get confused. But one pretty solid rule is that if you have another person doing an action in a clause, this is going to become a clause. Let's not worry too much about that wording. I hate that wording, but it's a sentence within a sentence, right? So you're saying he is eating the apple that he is eating. Okay, listen. The apple that, so now we have modified the apple to be the apple that he is eating. We haven't said anything about it. We could say anything we want about it from this point once we have it. But this is just one subject. It's the apple that he's eating. In this particular sentence, when you have a person that's doing an action in a clause or a subclause within a sentence, right, within a larger sentence, it's going to be normally the person will be marked with ga. All right, moving on. Now we have. What do you think this means? Before I tell you, you might be able to figure it out. Tabeta ringo. What apple is that? Tabeta ringo. Right, right. You got it, John. Good job, John. That is the apple that I ate. Now, because I don't have he or she or mother or father or some other person in there, when when Japanese people don't have that subject or topic in their sentence because they're normally they're they don't they're talking about themselves so if i just say and then something else after that like ah the, the apple that i ate what about above we're gonna assume that it's i okay when there is no watashi wa or anata ga or kare ga or kanojo ga it's i typically unless the topic's already been introduced keep that in mind okay now if i had asked a question to somebody and there was no anata wa watashi Wa, kare wa, something like that. If there wasn't any sort of pronoun there, and it's a question, and you're talking to somebody, you always assume it's you. Okay. And while I'm teaching bonus things that we already should know, if someone talks to you in third person and then use your name, your name there does not mean your name, it means you. So, for example, if someone says to you, let's say your name is like mine, the same as me, you're George. George wa nansai desu ka? That doesn't mean. How old is George? It means how old are you? Just keep that in mind that your name is often used, almost always used, to mean you. All right. Sorry. In teaching mode for a moment. All right. So now we've put some person doing the action. Instead of, if I say tabeta ringo, without any pronouns, it's the apple that I ate. But here we're saying, Otousan ga tabeta ringo. the apple that father ate, or the apple that my father ate. All right. Now we're going to look at full sentences that. Utilize verbs describing this apple. So let's go ahead and listen and you think what it means. Kino tabeta ringo ga oishikatta desu. Oh man. Just take a moment, guys. You should really consider getting some oyocha. Oyocha, best green tea. It's available at Costco. I'm not sponsored, but I should be. I drink so much of this green tea.、Uh, get it at Costco. You can buy it on Amazon. All right. All right. Let's listen again to this sentence. Kino tabeta ringo ga oishikatta desu. Kino tabeta ringo ga oishikatta desu. So, what was delicious? The apple that I ate yesterday. Man, the apple that I ate yesterday was delicious. Think about that. You have no way to do that if you're not directly modifying apple with a verb phrase. You could say, Kino ringo o tabemashita. I ate an apple yesterday. Oishikatta desu. It was delicious. But that's not cool. That's not how you speak. We don't say this in English. We never go, I ate an apple yesterday. It was delicious. We say, Oh man, the apple I ate yesterday was so good. That's what we say. Kino tabeta ringo ga oishikatta desu. All right, moving on. Listen to this one. Kino joji ga tabeta ringo ga oishiso datta. Now, here we have the same tabeta ringo, but we've modified it with joji ga. Now, I am the person that ate the apple. Notice I am marked with ga. Yesterday, the apple that George ate, what about it? I couldn't say, by the way, Keep this in mind, I wouldn't say oishikatta desu. Why? How do you know that the apple that I ate is delicious? So, in this case, in Japanese, to sound more natural, you have to say it looked delicious because you don't really know. 
Now keep this in mind because as your Japanese gets more advanced, you'll always, not always, but sometimes you'll be like, why do they say it that way? And not this way. Like in English, we like to say things like, uh, George thinks this. George loves her. But we don't really know what's inside someone's head. So Jap at least in Japanese, they don't assume those direct way of speaking. So they say, Oishisoudatta. It looked delicious. Or they might say, he said it was delicious. They would never presume to know what I know. So this sentence would never be, Because that would mean that I ate it too. The person speaking about me ate it also. Alright. Now, I, I don't mean to go, we're level four, so I probably could do this. If I had said, some of you might be thinking, couldn't I say, Oishikatta so desu. That means I didn't witness the eating of the apple. That means I heard that it was delicious. That's a little bit complicated, but if you want to be the one that saw him eat it and you think that you witnessed it and it looked delicious to you, then you have to say, Oishiso datta. But if you heard that it was delicious, that would be Oishikatta so desu. Okay, it means apparently it was delicious. All right, the main point being that if we're going to talk about the apple that George ate, no matter what we're going to say about it, it has to be done directly modifying. All right, let's go through another set of examples, and I'll try to uh, keep the chitter chatter down. All right, so now I think you know what's going to happen. We have three books. We have this this book here that I'm buying. We have this or this book that I'm going to buy. We have this book here that I am buying, and now we have a book that I bought. Okay, so the book that I'm going to buy is Kau Hon. Okay, and now just throwing a little bit of a bonus here. What does this mean? Tomodachi ni kau hon. Tomodachi ni kau hon. This is the book that I'm going to buy for a friend. So ni can also mean for, F O R, not just to. Japanese is always the same as English, it requires to have a two or a four, but Tomodachi ni. Kaimashita means I bought it for a friend. Okay? Tomodachi ni kaimashita. So, tomodachi ni kau hon. The book that I will buy for a friend. All right? This is pretty easy for you probably now. Katte iru hon. The book that I am buying. You could throw an ima in front of there if you want to make it even more apparent. Katte iru hon. Okay, next one. Kare ga katte iru hon. Kare ga katte iru hon. Now it's not me buying it. It's the book that he is buying. All right? Katta hon. The book that I bought. Or if I was talking to somebody and they were the topic and I said, hey, uh, kino katta hon, blah, 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 blah. Hey, that book that you bought yesterday, if I'm asking them a question, then we assume it's them as the pronoun. By the way, that's not just for these type of sentences. That's all Japanese things. I'm just, as a teacher, I'm just trying to remind you of these particular things because I know when you're learning a new concept, sometimes the basics leave your head. It's a really weird phenomenon that you learn something advan uh, advanced and you forget Japanese basics. But when you're using verbs to describe all of the words that you learned, all of the patterns that you learned are all 100% still accurate. They still are required. All of the particles are still the same. You just have to have them all lined up in an informal verb. It must be informal. Imagine that when you're using verbs to describe, you have to package them in a smaller box. So you're going to squish them down. So you wouldn't say, kaimasu hon, or katte imasu hon, or kaimashita hon. Okay? That's going to be a little bit unnatural, if not wrong, most of the time. Okay. I, say, I only say that I'm hedging just a little bit, because there are times where there's things that I would never say, but some people might say them, right? For example, normally when you use kara to link sentences, like because I'm going to buy, kau kara, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes there are people who say kaimasu kara, but I would never say that. So I want to make sure that you know that just because I might not say it or you might not say it doesn't mean that someone else might. But per, for here, I'm pretty sure you're not going to say kaimasu hon 99% of the time. All right. So what does this one mean? So now we have a subject. The person that's doing the buying is Onisan, older brother. Okay. Or remember, Onisan can also mean 
young man. The, the book that the young man bought. Okay. お兄さんが買った本。Okay, so what book is that? It's the book that my older brother bought. All right, let's look at some sentences. セールの時に買った本が面白いです。Okay, what home? Oh, sorry. What book is interesting here? I mean, you could just say, 本が面白いです。But let's say you have 15 books in front of you. Which one do you mean? Is it the one you bought at Kinokuniya? Is it the one that you got at a yard sale? Is it the one that you got from a friend? All of these things could have verb phrases in front of them to describe them. But this particular home, this particular book, セールの時に買った本が面白いです。The book that I bought when it was a sale. That makes no sense that it's weird to say it that way, but the book that I bought when it was on sale, okay? Or at the sale, when the sale. We don't normally say like when the sale in English, but that's what you're saying in Japanese, okay? I don't know. I don't even know what a good way to try The book I bought, the book I bought on sale, that's probably what we would say. The book that I bought that was on sale was interesting. But here we're just saying, sale no toki. The time that you bought it was at that sale. And what about that book? It was interesting. Okay, throwing a little bit of advanced stuff in here, just a little bit. We have some double.、Uh, Particles that we're going to deal with, but let's go ahead and just try to figure it out, work it out. I'll play it one more time. I'll give you a few seconds while I drink some of my oi o cha and you can think about it. So, if you remember in book one, we talked about. Everything before the wa tends to be the topic or part of the topic. That's exactly what's happening here. Everything after the wa tends to be a question or a statement about the topic. That's also happening. Okay, so what is the basic topic? What's our most basic topic? It's a book. But everything before the book modifies that book, it gives it more definition. So let's just one word at a time. Katteru hon, book that I'm buying. We, we say I because we don't know who is buying it yet. It hasn't been stated. Until we get to a subject, we're not going to assume a subject. Ima katteru hon, book that is being, buying, is, be, is being bought now. The book that I'm buying now. Ah, now we have ano hito. The book that that person is buying now, I see him at the register buying the book. What about it? Watashi ni wa. Here's where, here's where ni means for again. Watashi ni wa, for me, takasugimasu. It's too expensive. Watashi ni wa, takasugimasu. Let's listen one more time. Ano hito ga ima katteru hon wa, watashi ni wa takasugimasu. All right. How's everyone doing? Now we're going to go through some more examples and then we're going to get to a quiz. All right, so now we've only done future tense, ongoing present tense form, and past tense. We can use this with other forms. Let's just go ahead and do a little bit, little bit of review and then we'll show you how it works with other forms. So it's informal form of the verb plus the noun directly. Okay, so let's just introduce our verb, kiru. We learned kiru. I'm、oh, sorry, kiru. We learned kiru.、Uh, we learned that, I believe, last week when we learned the wearing verbs. So, kiru, kiru means to, I will wear. What a, okay? And, fuku. Fuku. Okay? So, kiru, fuku is the clothing that I will wear. Kiru, fuku. Right? So, I could say,、um, ashita, kiru, fuku ga nai desu. I have no clothing to wear tomorrow. Ashita, tomorrow, kiru fuku clothing that I will wear, ga nai desu. I don't have any. I have no clothing to wear tomorrow. Think about that. You, there is no way to do that right now in Japanese, okay? That you know. I'm sure someone will maybe post a version of it that might work in the comments, though, as always. So let's do. Kita. Okay. War. Fuku. The clothing that I wore. Okay? So these are ones that we've already done. These are, 
Sorry, my English is not so good right now. These are the ones that we've already done. Okay, we've done. Kirufuku. And. Kitafuku. Okay, but we can use a form that we haven't used before. We can say this one. Kinai. Now remember that kinai doesn't mean just don't wear. It means won't wear also. Samuso. Oh, someone did not link that. Fuku. Uh, samuso. Uh, what does that mean? Tell me in the comments. Fuku. Wait, now it worked. Fuku. Wait, what? Samuso. Oh, the plus is linked. The plus is samuso. linked. Samuso. 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 <laughs> All of these things get recycled. All right, so. Kinai. Fuku. All right. Kinai fuku. The clothing that I don't wear or the clothing clothing that I won't wear. What about them? Maybe you could say, uh, kinai fuku o kifu shimashita. I donated the clothing that I don't wear anymore. Mo kinai fuku, clothing I don't wear anymore. O, making that whole thing as the object. What did you do with them? Kifu shimashita. Kifusuru means to donate. All right. Oops. Uh, Furigano came up a little bit quick there. So now we've got Kitaifuku. the clothing that I want to wear. Kitaifuku. I could say, hey, what are the clothing that you want to wear? Kitaifuku wa nani? What the, I could say that to somebody. I could also say, donna fuku o kitai, or donna fuku ga kitai, but I could also say it this way. All right. Now we can take past tense, any form, as long as it's in its informal form. And for uh, the want to do forms to be in their informal form, you just don't have des on the end. So, kitai means I want to wear it, but kitai des is more polite. It's the des must form, right? We can't use des must form in this particular construction. Kitakatta fuku. The clothing that, that I wanted to wear. Okay. The clothing that I'm wearing. We already know that we can do the te imas form, the te iru form, the ongoing present tense form. And we can take that into the past tense. The clothing that I was wearing. Think about it. You can say, hey, the clothing I wore, what did you think of the clothing that I was wearing yesterday? What do you think of the clothing I was wearing yesterday? Think about how advanced that is compared to where you've come from. That's a very complicated sentence. If you want to test somebody's Japanese level, see if they can do a verbs that describe. It's it's not an easy concept. It's easy once you know it, but it's it it requires all of this other knowledge for it to for you to be able to do it. All right. Okay, let's go through some example sentences. Then we have uh, one Q and A, and then we have a quiz. All right, here you go. Think about each one of these, and I want you to repeat it, say it after the word. Uh, after the sound, and then I want you to translate it as best as you can. Say it out loud so you don't cheat. This time I want you to close your eyes, listen, and say it. Keep your eyes closed. Do it again. If you're always reading, you'll never ever build up your hearing. Uh, this is why I really recommend podcasts. If you can find audio only podcasts at native speed to listen to them, because it will really tax your comprehension level. Uh, when you're watching TV, you have a lot of action on the screen and you can guess a lot that's happening. It's kind of a trick at that point. You think you know more than you know, but when you're listening to radio that doesn't have any video or visual feedback, your listening will strengthen. Um, I do this with Korean, and it really strengthened my Korean by listening to this one particular radio show, radio show all the time. Uh, and it's hard, and you won't understand most of what's happening. But there will be times where you fall into complete, like, a, like, like a kind of like a little like, like you won't understand all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, boom! There's like a moment, like a minute or two, where you understand everything. And sometimes, once you've, once you've grabbed the context. It just often you can go for a good five minutes and be just more interested in the content instead of what's happening language wise. Okay, so one last shot. I'm going to play it again. Now, I want you to say the English out loud as close as you can to what I'm going to really do, uh, show you. The place I want to go is a game arcade or a game center. Now, I know, I know nowadays 
arcades. Who goes to an arcade? But in Japan, they still have arcades. They have them in every, believe it or not, arcade. <laughs> Any little shopping area, they're, they're probably going to have one of these where they've got uh, gaming on one floor. Not gaming, like in America we call gaming, it's gambling, but it's gaming. Uh, but they'll have video games and they'll have like UFO catcher, the the, the claw, which they call UFO catcher in Japan. They'll have that on one floor and they'll have all sorts of games you can play. There. That is a game at Santa. So the place I want to go is a game center. All right? I mean, you could just say... Game center ni ikitai desu. I want to go to a game center. But what if you want to see something with more fidelity? The place I want to go the most is a game center. I want to go to a lot of places. Ikitai tokoro ga oi kedo, ichiban ikitai tokoro ga game center desu. Okay, I want to go to many places, but the place I want to go to the most is a game center. That's what you can do with this level. Without knowing how to use verbs to describe, you're kind of out of luck. All right. Again, repeat. After the sound. Ima katte iru inu wa shiba ken desu. Ima katte iru inu wa shiba ken desu. Okay, what do you think it means? The dog I'm raising now is a shiba, sorry. It's a shiba breed. So shiba ken is a shiba breed dog. It's a Japanese dog. Did you know that all Japanese breeds have curled tails? Little mini trivia for you. So in Japanese, the verb to raise is kau. And it's if you're raising a dog, you have to do it in the tame must form because it's ongoing form. So the dog I'm raising now is a Shiba. All right, next one. This one. Now, I want to point out, even though I'm telling you that this is high level grammar, Japanese people do not know that. So when you're a beginner, they will say things like this to you and you will have no clue what they mean. So mono is a thing. And what kind of thing? Taberarenai. Things that you cannot eat. Arimaska. Or is there anything that you can't eat? Is there anything you can't eat? Very simply said. Alright, next one. Okay. Getting a little bit of practice with the verbs that we learned in the last video. So what is the base thing that we're talking about here? Jeans. What jeans are we talking about? The jeans that I was wearing last year. What about them? Hakemasen. I cannot wear them more anymore. I can't wear the jeans that I was wearing last year anymore. Okay. Got a little bit too chubby. All right, one more set of examples. Okay, so we're at a party and we're looking for somebody. Tanaka san wa dono kata desu ka? Okay, so here we're going to use this. Sorry, I didn't mean to show you the English so quick. I'm trying to get to my note here. But uh, kata is a nice way to say hito. It's the honorific way. And if you're talking about someone that you don't know, you're definitely going to use kata. So, Tanaka-san wa dono kata desu ka? Okay. Which person is Mr. Tanaka? I'm assuming Mr., but San alone, we don't know. It could be a Mrs. It could be a Miss. It could be any of those things. Okay. So we're looking for a specific person. We're looking for a specific kata. Aoi suits wo kite iru kata desu. So here's one possible answer. Aoi suits wo kite iru kata desu. Okay. What does that mean? Aoi suits wo kite iru kata desu. Okay, what person is he? He is the aoi suits wo kite iru kata. The person wearing the blue suit. It's the person who is wearing the blue suit. Here's another possible answer. Asoko de hayashi san to hanashite iru kata desu. Asoko de hayashi san to hanashite iru kata desu. What kata is he? He is the asoko de over there, hayashi san to with hayashi san, hanashite iru kata, talking with person. He's the person over there talking with hayashi san. It's the person who is talking with Mr. Hayashi over there. Again, I'm assuming that this particular person is a man, but it could have been Mrs. Hayashi or Miss Hayashi. 
All right. Final one. 今入ってきた方です。Okay. 今入ってきた方です。So you're looking for him. Hey, which one of these guys is Tanaka? Oh, 今入ってきた方です。He's the person who now entered. He's the person that just came in. It's the person who just came in. All right. Now, before the quiz,、uh, I want you to know that if you're looking for more fun ways to absorb some Japanese, on my private, not my private channel, but my personal channel, I just got the URL, so I'm just announcing it today youtube.com slash George Trombley. I am playing a game right now called Life is Strange. There's about Five or six videos already that have been made for it, and I'm continuing to play it. I'll probably play a little bit more tonight or tomorrow, but it's all in Japanese, and I have subtitles in English. But with this particular game, the subtitles are very bad because I didn't make them, the game made them, and they're atrocious. And a lot of times, if I'm paying attention to the English subtitles, I will point out what is wrong with those subtitles, and that leads to a little bit of learning Japanese. Here's an example. 必要な情報が足りてない、うん、やるべきことは3つある OK So close yet so far was not what she said 必要な情報が足りてない必要な情報が足りていない So 必要な情報 means necessary information 足りる means to be enough 足りない means to not be enough 足りていない means it's in a state of not being enough There's three things that we should do, have to do. All right, so you guys are welcome to come join me. Now, are you ready for the quiz? It's interactive. Are you ready? I want you to write as many sentences as you can about this picture using verbs that describe. Don't go crazy. Don't cheat, but say the things that you think you can. Accurately say. Okay? I will make a video after this with all of the examples that I can come up with. And if you have some interesting ones, I'll try to introduce them also. Thank you for watching. I'm George Trombley. I'll see you all on the next video. Bye. All right. If you guys are still here, remember, go check out George Trombley channel. Also, if you want to see me in Japan, you can go to Adventures in Asia channel. Also, this video. It's probably pretty good, and this one's even better. And also, have, have you not subscribed yet? Subscribe, please. Hit that like button too. Bye.